Hi, so I want to show today that the mapping reductions are transitive. So what does transitive mean? It means that if A mapping reduces to B and B mapping reduces to C, then that implies that A mapping reduces to C. So this is actually a pretty quick proof. So we're, a, we're given these two here. So we're, we know that these two are true and we want to prove the third one right here. So what does a mapping reduces to B mean? That means that there's some function F such that uh, if W is in A, then it, that's true if and only if F of W is in B. That's what it means to be mapping reducible. And the other thing is that F has to be computable. It has, it's some computable function. It runs in some amount of time, might be a lot of time, but uh, it runs in some amount of time. And we also have that B mapping reduces to C, and there's some function G, it might be the same, it might be different than the F one, but it's some computable function too. So if we have some W in B, that's true if and only if G of W is in C. And as, as we just noted here, the G function, I should point at G instead, this thing is computable. So that means if we want to show that A mapping reduces to C, we better produce a, a computable function that converts inputs of A to, in, to inputs of C. So what we can do is let's just compose the two functions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to design a function H of w and i'm going to have that be well the one that i want to be applied last is the g function because that goes from b to c and the f one goes from a to b so i want to apply f first and then apply g second so i'm going to apply f first and then apply g second and i claim that h is computable too so this thing i claim to be computable and the reason is that uh, f of w is computable, so I can just write f of w onto the tape, and g of whatever is computable, because I can just feed the output of the f guy into the input of the g1, and the g1 is computable too. So we know that f produces things that are in b, and g takes things that are inputs of b to uh, correspond to uh, inputs of c. And, and so therefore, if I take W, which is an input of A, on the right side, I'm gonna get something that belongs to C, if and only if W was an A before. And so therefore, this function right here is not only computable, but it actually goes, the inputs of A are there if and only if the result is in C, which is what a mapping reduction actually is. So therefore, mapping reductions are transitive. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your comments about mapping reductions and their transitivity in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.